I'm here with Kat Kerr, and Kat, you are self-obsessed with texture. You have said that to me, right? I can, I love it. Layers and layers and layers of texture make me happy. And now you've got some really cool tricks for how we're gonna get texture out of a lot of flat objects. That's right. Um, I'm using this white opaque craft plastic and I'm gonna add some heat and then crumple it up and make some delicious texture. Ooh, let's make that happen. Yeah, so this comes in a 12 by 12 sheet and okay. I cut it down to four pieces. I'm only gonna show you uh, how to make one, but you will end up with four. And so I just take one of those and I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to add some holes. Of course, be mindful of your hands. You don't want to cut yourself. And I'm just making little holes here because later on when we heat this up, those holes are going to just be even more delicious and I love texture. that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's sort of a wonky circle. Oh, wonky, yeah. You're not worried about it. Now you're just using a hole punch? Yeah, and whatever size hole punch you have in your stash, then pick it up and start making and some holes because all of that delicious texture is going to come out later on and I want to lose that rough that you know square edge on there and so I cut all of my edges and I end up with something like this so if you want to come over here yeah. I'll show you how to heat it up and this piece, as you can see, I cut it's all of Swiss the edges. Swiss cheese. It's Swiss cheese, that's right. I love, by the way, that you cut one of the circles right on the edge, or actually mm -hmm. several of them. That looks so cool. Yeah, thank you. And so we're going to manipulate this plastic by using a heat gun. Um, I didn't get this in a craft store. I got it in a hardware store, so it does have a higher heat um, flow to it's it. It's like one that's meant for stripping paint or something yes, like that. Yes, that's right. Okay. okay, and anytime you're using a tool or anything like that, make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area and that you're wearing safety glasses. I'm also um, using some wood-handled tweezers, and I'm just going to heat it up. And of course, you're working in a metal pan, so yeah. as you're keeping everything, just making sure that nothing's going to heat too much. That's right. I um, use this pan only mm -hmm. for my heating. Okay. And so I'm, gonna heat, I'm going to heat the plastic and as it starts to, to heat, it'll get shiny. And once it starts turning shiny, I can press it onto the side of my tray and manipulate it just a little bit. So almost like you're crumpling it by yeah. pushing it against the edge? Exactly. And that's another reason why I love using the cookie sheet. You can see that I'm just gently manipulating it and I would continue to do this until the entire piece is nice and textured, okay? So there's no like right moment to stop or anything like that. It's just when you're happy with it and I can see that you have one here which looks like it is beautifully textured and crumpled. I know, but now it needs some happy color, right? So we're going to use the alcohol inks to add some color. And you can apply this two ways. You can apply it directly. Oh, I forgot to cut that open. Hold on a second. I guess you need <laughs> well, to cut it open, right? Well, I was right? going to say alcohol inks are a great surface uh, or a great product for non-porous surfaces. That's right. right? So yes. plastic, for instance, which can be difficult. It's, a, it's just a thing that goes really smoothly onto that kind of surface and is permanent. That's right. And they, they, the colors are super vibrant, which I absolutely love. And if you notice, I do have some wax paper on my surface here just to protect the surface. And so you can spread it with a brush if you want, but they also have these um, fine tip uh, nozzles so you can direct the color to wherever you want. And you're gonna cover all of your pieces with the alcohol. And I'm noticing in the places where it's like thicker, meaning you didn't like brush it out, it looks darker. Is mm -hmm. that true? That's what's gonna, how it's gonna dry? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love that because it gives the color different value. And to add even more texture, I have some rubbing alcohol. I don't know if I could still do it. It, but it just adds a little bit of texture. And so once your pieces are all covered with the alcohol ink, I'm going it to add- It looks like candy. It's yeah. so brightly colored. And I love how it's still so shiny. It almost looks wet. Yeah, I love it. And so now I'm just going to add some black splatters. And I'm also using some acrylic paint. Um, and I'll finish it with just some art spray. And this is in gold, and I pick the gold because it absolutely sparkles. I'm not spraying it. I, have, I actually like to apply it this way because I have a little bit more control of the color 
when I do it this way. As I love that you say you have more control and then you immediately just sort of fling it around. But it doesn't go all over. <laughs> it just goes in this little corner right here. So of course you do it however way you like to do it. And when I end up with four of these, I'm going to um, put them all together by using some gold string. You can glue them, whatever you like. I happen to like the string because um, more texture is even better, right? So I'm just feeding it through and I'm attaching all of these pieces together. So once they're all ready to go, I'll actually print up an image onto matte computer film. And I do that because I love these beautiful vintage images, but I want to add a little pop of color. So what I do is I'll take some of this water so soluble. So this is the image as it comes out of the printer, and this is after you've added the color. That's right, that's right. And this is just a little bit of gold, and you can see that a, just a little hint of it adds, it's so delicate You're and beautiful. The photo. It's beautiful, I love it. And so now I have my image. I've actually mounted it onto um, some foam, and I can go ahead and assemble my shadow box. So if I have this piece right here, a little bit more texture, I would put this right in there. I would add my image and anything else that you want to add on there. And you can see by some of the samples that you don't even have to heat up the craft plastic. You can just cut it out into unique shapes and still make wonderful textured backgrounds. But that's the key to everything, right? Is the texture we want, yes. visual texture, so that people want to reach out and touch it and that's all right. that good stuff. That's right. This is a super fun project. Thank you, Kat. Thank you so much.